Hello, I'm Sifu Keller. Welcome to this series on Jeet Kune Do Footwork, Volume 1. What is Jeet Kune Do? Jeet Kune Do is a science of footwork. Jeet Kune Do is a street science. Jeet Kune Do is also Cantonese. Jeet means stop, catch, or intercept. Stop is the block, catch is the grab, intercept is the parry. This is done by sensing or feeling the other opponent's energy. In the formula, there are three energies. One, the dead energy with hard blocks to stop or interrupt technique and timing. Two, the harmonious spring. There are two harmonious springs, yours and the other practitioner. You must learn to sense both energies. The third is the dissolving energy, to circle, to parry, to maneuver their energy to yours. Footwork is the most important aspect. The footwork is the key to defending any attack. So good footwork will beat any kick or punch. The essence of fighting is the art of moving. All right, so what is Jeet Kune Do? It's of philosophies and principles. What is the main yin and yang of the martial arts? It's of mind and body. So what is the essence of the martial arts? It's not of violence, but a control of oneself. All right, so the essence of fighting is the art of moving, and the essence of the martial arts is of control. So we have control and movement. Movement is body and principles. And the control is mind and philosophy. If you love life, then don't waste time, because time is what life is made up of. I didn't say that. Bruce Lee did. So don't procrastinate. Try your best. All right, let's get started. So the idea is to watch the footwork. That's the key that's going to get you in. So the first one will be dropping my body weight forward. So when I penetrate their realm, I want to be able to maneuver myself inside my realm stepping outside my realm and the timing to do both. So the idea, step out here for a minute. The idea is I'm looking, now I have what they call unmatching lead. I want to be able to look and see where I'm positioned. So I have to be able to fill the gap. So he side kicks, and as soon as the movement comes in, be a knife energy, a low line energy, or a high line energy, I want to react to that movement, okay? So in the process of this, if I'm in a good baijong, this hand is slightly dropped, okay? If I match the leads up, I drop this hand. As soon as I switch my movement, this hand is dropped. The elbow, the wu sao is sitting to guard the incoming. Where are they trying to hit me? Are they trying to hit my shoulders? They're trying to hit my solar plex. They want to have the primary and the secondary hit. A primary hit could be the throat, the eyes most definitely the solar plex, the groin. A secondary hit might be an entry, but what I just did is I used a footwork called the rear pendulum. So as I slid forward to throw the front kick to react off of an income, off of matching leads, I strike. I look for what is called the mon sound. So with matching leads, I want to strike using hand first, centering it from point A to point B. I don't want my elbow to come up. So in the process of this, I want to be able to hit dropping that body weight forward. Now, to exaggerate it, because I want to fill the gap, I'm pretty far away to do this. So I would look for the pock cell to get the obstruction out of the way. So if I'm off this far, now, this time I use the back shuffle push by pushing off with my rear leg, opposed to stepping down. Switch side. So he's right lead forward. I'm right lead forward. So I'm looking to take this fist as it's first to hit, and I want to whip it. I want to take the fist, and just as I bring it out, I want to turn my, my fist into the side of his temple. So I want to whip the back of the wrist just as I make impact. I want to be able to drop the whole body weight forward as I do it. Now what I'm going to after I master this, or practice it and feel comfortable to doing it in combat, now what are you going to do? That's one technique using the front footwork out of the Baijong positioning moving in. So the strike is made. Now he Wong Pak's really nice because he's very, very economical. Hop and switch. So as we hop and switch with matching leads, what they call orthodox boxing position, as my elbow seeks the center line, this, this front lead is slightly dropped. So in the process of that, as I move out, I'm going to get what they call the outside sector. Okay. 
So as I react off of the move, all of a sudden a person can react because of the alignment of the footwork. So what happens is that when I struck, I didn't land here. See, now we're back to, so we, I didn't land here with the changing the alignment, because I want structure, I landed right here. So I can control that lead, that front lead. So as I landed down off of that movement, I did what they call the triangular footwork, stepping in off the rear, stepping forward, and I landed right here. I locked the leg out. So the movement of that is so precise. The weakest muscles in the human body are the inside of your thigh. That's what I'm drawing against. Right now, I'm using the back of my hip to draw his leg. In the process of that, I'm, I'm going against his weakest muscle. So that's why alignment matters. Structure will follow. So there's so many ways of approaching the movement, OK? The elbow is the key to the center line. It's a reference point. He punches me, and the movement comes down. I'm on the reference point. So as I strike, I have options. As I land, my foot lands right directly if I take to the inside sector, I, unmatching leaves, okay? I take this movement here to get what they call the swinging gait, but the footwork is what matters. I would buy Zhang in to bring him straight down. What happened as I did this is I use the deterrent of the empty energy. So I reach this movement here becomes what they call the swinging gait. So what happens is I close the gate. So I hit a couple times to let him know I'm coming in. I know I'm stepping to the inside of his leg. As soon as I step, the sweep is made because, again, I'm going against the weakest muscle or the inside thigh. And I'm drawing back through this. So there's a good chance this will work, more for some than others. If somebody's really strong and they're 6'1", they can draw pull somebody pretty quick because they are all legs, to say the least, in perspective of movement. So I get the. Mon cell I'm looking for. So just when I get response, instead of the Lin Lop, I draw back. So it never touched. And he just got hit in the eye. So it never touches. Hop and switch. From unmatching leads on this side, he punches. I hit the Hoon Sal energy to draw him in. Watch my footwork. Straight in. Now punch. See it? So as the hand moves, I react right to the reference point. So all of a sudden it lands in a position, I can lock out, strike straight up. I got the Manching Sal, but I'm dropping my body weight out of a 50-50 known as the open Baijong. Okay, he punches, I punch. So as the roll comes across, he was hit low line and high line using a Hoon Sal, circling wrist. He punches, Hoon Sal is circling wrist. So he punches, I hoon a Tong Sal, Hoon Sal, Strike, strike straight back up. Dropping my body weight behind it will give me impact. He punches. Now remember, he's stepping in. So I'm having somebody step in on my energy as I'm doing that too. With matching leads, what I look for is that monsal. So I want to drop. Do it. Drop your body weight forward. One more time. Focus. Not bad. Let this one happen first. Go. Not too bad. Now, when this arm drops down, the Bill G comes right behind it. So when I do this, I'm stepping in off the front lead to get the monsal. As soon as I feel the monsal, I get the obstruction out of the way, but it's a footwork that's getting it on the inside to make it work. Now this time I hit a toxal, rising elbow from the rear. So when I moved in, I changed my positioning. So from here, there's a cut kick that's coming straight up off the rear. So as soon as I torque the body, I'm using a, a cut kick using the open Baijong positioning. Taking it from here, Lin Lop Sal possibility. But when it overextends, I'm looking to do a Bill G. The brace of the gum Sal isn't just the push, but my elbow against the, the, the side of his center line, because I'm closing off to the center line. Now, is this time I drew the, the movement down. Well, how long do I have from this? What I'm doing 
is dropping the body weight forward to take this punch to do a jutsal. The point is, what am I going to do next? How can I react? Step over here. I'm going to change the Baijong positioning to a triangular footwork. So this time I step in to strike, setting up where my knee checks the front lead. Doesn't mean you have to hit, but it'll check. So the punch comes in. This time I dissolved it to come straight back up. It's the Baijong that's getting me to the inside to do this. By this, I drop the body weight forward to make my strike. Okay. Step out. And being able to adapt yourself through your blocks to your opponent's movements. That's what this is about. Jit Kune Do is alignment. So now I've changed the energy. Somebody's a little taller, a little quicker, in perspective of learning. Back up just a hair, right about there. Okay, roundhouse. Okay, relax. Breathe, kick hard. Okay, now as the truth comes up, I'm in my Baijong positioning. I have to react to the movement. What am I using? A Wong Pak positioning. So as the front lead comes up, I can react off of it. <coughs> the idea is having good alignment without televising what I'm going to do or sensing it. So he roundhouses. Fuk Sao is made. His back is now to me. So all of a sudden, the whole fight totally changes because of footwork. Okay? Timing and positioning. Timing when you strike, positioning when you hit. Okay? Side kick. Parry's made. This time I used the rear hand to do a, what they call a bill sow. I'm in a woo sow. Indirected arm is lined up. I want to keep my center line closed while I explore it there. So as I do this, I throw a low line fuk sow. Okay, stand over here. Punch me in the face. Fook sow. Now he feels that lock temporarily. What am I going to do now that I practice that? There's a drill called the Fook sow to the Wu sow parry. He punches. One, I'm ready. Go right to the back of the elbow, which is reference point. So what you do is you set it up. The Wu sow is set up. So he punches one, two, and you get right here. So from this reference point, I'm going to strike, possibly go into a quat choi to a chung choi. It would look like this. He punches. Okay, as I lock this arm down, punch comes up. Uh, chung choi, quat choi, coming straight across. One more time. Punch one, two. I have a strike here, not to mention the back shuffle in reverse pendulum coming off the rear leg to kick straight back up, reversing the energy. Okay, punch again. Fook sao. Hooking him. He punches again. Wu Sao. Fuks out of the Wu Sao parry. I parried it over to strike. The fight's not over, but it sets up direction of what an average or most likely would happen. Now watch. He punches. Now this time here, he's going to sense this, so he's going to pull it around to Jiao Sao off of this lead. So I'd come back with a pa possibility. I wouldn't have done that though. I would have probably come low line. Punch. Hoon Sao. I would have come low line. Got it? Being able to adapt yourself through your blocks and setting up where the energy is going to go. Step over here. Now, with matching leads off a right to a right, the unorthodox boxing position, he's going to punch and recoil. Just like this. Punch and recoil. Punch and recoil. This time I sense, so I move in off. Punch and recoil. Okay? So what I do is I sense off of the recoil. He punches, he recoils, I hit to the eye. He punches. So how do I fook sow to get the inverted lop sow? And when I do, when I hit with the quat choy, dropping my whole body weight forward, what is his option? From the swinging gate, you have what they call ball and socket or off the hinge. Basically, hop and switch, basically what you want to know is that when I hit, not too bad, because he sensed it to be there. And when at the moment that you get that strike, I get this, he, he reacts, pushes this one into the wrist, and then you come back with a Lin Lopso. Got it? And in the process of that, you probably hit pretty quick to the eyes. 
you'll, you'll hit the target. The bullseye would be just that. Got it? Hop and switch. So I have different hand positioning of options. He punches. I hit Seattle slightly as I move back up to get to the reference point to the outside sector. He punches, split sector. Again, I'm on the reference point to load down the jow sow to sense. So now I just hit what they call the 60-40 Baijong, okay, which is out of Oakland. So as soon as I lock down, do it. One more time. Hop and switch so you can see it on this side. Go. Not too bad. One more time. Options up the yin yang. Okay. The four that we work off of. Okay. If I get here, not too bad. I land to the inside leg so I can knock his leg out. If I land off the bijong and I hit, everybody's knee matches. It doesn't matter who it is. Okay. My knee is matching his as he's sitting at 6'1". Okay. So it doesn't matter. You'll see when I work with different people that everybody's knee matches. And that is a key that will help you determine on where you land. If I hit off the monsau, whether I take the talks out of maneuvering this way, to react off of the talks out means rising elbow. He punches low line, so I'm, I have to hit three different monsaus. There are three monsaus. There's one high line, executed energy, or two low line. Now, water can flow or crash. You'll go to do a technique and they'll move and stop your energy. If you are in running water, never grows stale, it just keeps on flowing. Then what you're sitting on, okay, is PIA, progressive indirection. If you hit the stall for whatever reason, you're in what they call HIA. That's the whole fight to Jeet Kune Do. HIA to PIA, PIA to HIA. ABD is where all your strategy is. Strategically, that's where I'm sitting. Okay? He side kicks. I hit Seattle to absorb the energy. Now, I, Seattle is a 70 30. It closes off the Baijong as I close it off. So, as he side kicks, I'm going to use the front lead side kick. So, as he throws that kick, kick me with it. That's nice. I'm able to sit off of the movement. So, if I can take this. Slightly, Bill Sal this time, not off the front lead, but the rear lead, I could Fook Sal, not just from like a, a front lead coming, but just off a, off a technique, off the kick coming in. It would look like this. He side kicked, and all of a sudden I parry it to the side, just enough to change the fight's not over by any means. But the idea is you've changed the positioning of the other practitioner, and you haven't had to go anywhere. So I need to know a 50-50, a 70-30 and a 60-40 out of my Baijong positioning to know where they're set. The second part of the 60-40 is the first part again is knocking the leg out. The second part, if I lay in here, I book this neck not too bad, you'll push the front lead back. The next part is if I hit shin to shin, you'll draw him to the ground because of the foot positioning. And that's done again with the weakest muscle of the inside leg. And the other part to it is I check four parts to this. I can take the movement and drive my knee forward, jamming up the knee. If you land, you'll know what to do. Never been there before, chances are you'll never go. If you've been there before, chances are you'll go again. Bruce Lee was a genius. The idea is to know the word, and again, it's not hard to learn the word, but what's the meaning behind the Wu Sao? and the movement of the punch of what's going to happen. And then you sense the energy and you let it flow. Well, it's not easy. To be a black belt, it takes three to four years, depending on the style. For us to learn the trapping, it might take you five or six years because it's more advanced. So JKD, maybe not that you're working on a belt rank by any means, but you've got to put the clock time into it. So I just check the front leg. And by checking the front leg, I have options. And the idea is to step to the inside of the front lead. Now, there are times when I would step here, but only economically put your foot here. So I may step here economically because then I have an option. So if I just touch him with the back of my calf, I can maneuver because of positioning structure. Okay? 
So the idea is for me to strike. Now I knew he was going to parry it, so at that point I came to the what they call the, I dissolved it by moving my hand back. Same principle as the swinging gate. But as you get it down, you can't take the five-way neuromuscular response pattern and not get anything out of it. You can't take your speed pot drills, the Dong Chi Sao, okay, the Siong Chi energy, the Silim Dao. Bruce Lee did the Silim Dao five day times every day, even on the movie set. So the idea is to open your mind to the technique. You have to understand it's about matching and unmatching leads. It's about engaging and disengaging. And you have to fight to know where your alignment's going to be, and then you'll get structure out of that. Okay, so watch what happens. This time, he's going to sidekick, and I'm going to use a rear, what they call a bill sow, to a fook sow. Watch how the fight changes. I will hit the Baijong of Seattle as he does it. So I'm in the, so remember when you're fighting, you're on the balls of your feet. I'm maneuvering on the balls of my feet to react. So at the same time, but your back heel stays up, principle. The elbow seeks the center line, principle. Hand moves before body, principle. So I have to react off of that, that movement. I want to become economical. I don't want to show my shoulder or he'll televise it. This is done through the drill work called Independent Action by Bruce Lee. And through that one, you will help yourself to become more economical and then control your speed. Speed is always power. Flexibility gives us agility. It gives us speed, and speed is always power. Okay. So what I'm going to do is Bill Sao, Fook Sao off the Seattle, coming off of LA Chinatown, 50-50, open Baijong. Then I'm going to go to a 70-30 to a closed Baijong. Let's watch what happens. Kick me good, though. All of a sudden, he's down here because I hit Seattle and came straight back up. And it was a simplified energy. Watch again. He kicked. See how the Fook landed? So as his energy is still coming forward, do not run away. Let go. Do not seek to find you when you least expect it. I didn't say that, Bruce Lee did. So as he side kicks, I take the parry, and I land down back to LA Chinatown. Watch one more time. He kicks, Seattle. Full extension, okay? He roundhouses, okay? Parry's made. Tap, 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 tap. You've got to get the footwork down to know it. Okay, this is how it's done, all right? What he and I are going to do is the first footwork drill from L.A. Chinatown. Stand over here. Okay. Reach out, grab, pull. Reach out and grab. Now, as you do this, feel yourself being pulled. Sense. Tai Chi Tuan means power of the ultimate fifth. It's Mandarin. In Cantonese, you'd say Tai Chi Kung. But the point I'm saying to that is it's not hard to learn the word, but realize the physical. Remember. <laughs> your structure is coming from your alignment. So the alignment is done through your flexibility to relax, to get at our speed. Speed is always power. So as I reach and I grab, I want to get the alignment first. So I want to feel the body weight of me dropping my body weight down. I'm showing you that the hand's got to move first. Now what am I going to do? There's a time when I may have to step over, hop and switch and step over, before this happens. So as you're doing this first piece of footwork, you've got to realize there's a lot of footwork. Bruce Lee said it's footwork, 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 and more footwork. And that lines up the five ways of attack. Remember, the fight's coming from ABD, which is all your strategy. You've got PIA, progressive indirection, where there's no blockage. And then you're working off of what they call HIA, handy mobilization. I just showed you that handy mobilization can be a kick. Any type of mobile energy where your hands are stopping the way of the interception and being able to use a fuxiao, and but it's your footwork that's going to make it work. So the first one we're going to do here is called the open baijong, and I'm going to call it baijong in. I'm in baijong position, moving in. Whether I turn to lock into a 60-40, that would be a low line executed energy. You have your shuffle hook, you have your corkscrew punch, you have your corkscrew hook. There are different moves that will come out of that 60-40, not to mention the four when you lock that front knee in. But there's a time, see me from this angle here, hop and switch, so let's go from this, let me back up so you can see both of them. 
lock it out. Back heel up, front heel up. Back heel up, front heel up. That's the practice, the Baijong of the 60-40. Elbow seeks the center line. Back heel up, front heel up. I'm torquing to maneuver my footwork so everything is right here so I can react off of it. LA Chinatown is going to be grabbing the pole and dropping your body weight forward. Grab and pull. Grab and pull. Grab and pull. Switch. Grab, pull. Grab, pull. Grab, pull. Switch. Okay, now let's do all three. Baijong. Okay, what we're going to do is step, hit Seattle, step back up, switch. Step, hit Seattle, step back up, switch. So we're taking all three. One, we're practicing coming in, hitting a 70 30, back to LA Chinatown, 60 40. Okay, focus. Switch. Not too bad. One more time. Focus. Step in. Lock it out because his hand's moving first. Remember, you saw hand positionings that I can use off the front lead, okay, or I can parry the energy off the rear hand for a reason. So when I hit Seattle, I can step back up. Now as I lock down, I have a built-in bong cell. I have a built-in hand positioning. The wing arm positioning is coming up. Various reasons. In case this movement comes in, a lot of people like to swim. They do swimming styles. They come in with their kicks off the rear and their hands, and they come in and they strike this way. Most of the martial arts are, re are robotic. Obviously, so is JKD. Because when I hit, I want to kick down to that front leg. Okay, that's just one technique. In the process of this, I'm looking to get maybe a lop sow to hit that tong sow to turn the person. I may move back, move back in. But at the same time, I step over. Footwork is everything. Baijong footworks are the three that you fight out of. That's called your ready stance or your on guard positioning. Okay? Watch one more time how it happens. You roundhouses. I hit Seattle, I step back in. Look how much closer I got. Why? Because when he threw a kick, his energy's coming in. Watch one more time. He backs up. After he throws a kick, he's got to be stepping in. I sense that because the kick is coming. <sighs> Open your mind to the technique. Okay, form will follow. But what we want for form is structure. And we want to be able to fight out of the science of what Jeet Kune knows about. He roundhouses. This time I fuchs out, drew it down quickly, and in the process of that I landed right here. Look how close I am. So the idea is that you're sitting in what they call second to third range. That's where the fight of JKD is going. Okay, I'm not going to add Muay Thai and Savat and Arnis and different systems of the martial arts. I'm not going to put Kali in this, even though it works. I'm, tr I'm trying to say is you learn the art of Jeet Kune Do the way it was taught by the Sijo. Bruce Lee was my Sijo. And through that, I learned straight up from people that had trained straight up. And there's a certain footwork that was taught. And the idea is to take the footwork behind the hand moving first. Bruce Lee didn't create that. The hand moves before the, the body. It's uh, the cat. The cat's paw moves before the body. But R Bruce Lee helped define it, helped look at it differently. And the idea is for me to take that movement, I got knee to knee engagement, I got me four options. One, the leg is checked. But the fight is happening in a blink of a second. Well, everybody has to know the one second rule, which is three hits in one second. Anybody can throw three hits in one second. Thousand in one, thousand in two, thousand in three. So the idea is to open your mind to the technique. Now all of a sudden you're striking is coming a little differently. So what footwork am I going to use, okay? He punches me, and I step to the back foot. Well, why would I do that if that foot wasn't forward? So I didn't have time to do the triangular footwork. So he punches me, and this time I step to the side and step in with the triangular because it's easier to go from point A to point B. If this leg is back, he punches, I can step to the side and throw the punch. If 
buy this, I have an option. Remember, I've eliminated so one of his weapons, but because it's about engaging and disengaging, I have to be able to tag out. So one of my weapons may be eliminated too. So he punches. So all of a sudden now I strike, and as he got hit here, this came back down, so I double popped the energy, but I was able to punch the step with the triangular footwork. Punch. And as I'm doing this, I'm slightly putting this foot back. So he punches, and I hit. Strike, elbow strike right here. I'm on the reference point that turns it. I just went to the inside sector on the way through. He punches. Whether I poons out to come back under the strike here to a 60-40 to drag pull the leg, and will it work? Absolutely. But the point is, as I'm working that energy, I'm sensing where I'm going to be, and he could change the whole movement. Okay, he punches, triangular footwork, using the male moving in, so I hit the split sector. Got it? He punches. This time I hit the elbow strike, the rising elbow, and when I do this, I'm using my whole body to torque robotically to maneuver his energy. Okay? So he takes the move. He punches, I punch. And through this energy, whether I throw the arm away, the punch low line or high line, the repock, well, what footwork did I just do? But I drove my body weight forward out of the open bijong, dropping my body weight forward. So he punches, body weight forward, strike here. This arm is up. He punches, Wu Sao Perry, open up the energy. Punch, not too bad. You got to punch me quick. So he punches, not too bad. As this punch comes down, this one turns and comes up. Flexibility gives us agility. Agility gives us speed, and speed is always power. Watch my footwork. So as I bai zhong in, I'm setting one, two, move. First is my mon sao, then I step into jiao sao. Flexibility gives us agility. Agility gives us speed, and speed is always power. So as the strike comes back to the groin, I come straight back up. If he blocked it, which he didn't, I could lend off possibility. It won't be quite that fast, but then I can ball and sock it straight up and over. 